Hey guys, it's Alec Torelli, and today I'm bringing you the top five moves to win at poker in 2021, right here from Huntington Beach, Cali. For the last day of the year, Ambra and I biked along the coast from Huntington to Seal Beach. There's nothing like feeling the wind in my face as the sun glazes down on my skin. If freedom had a feeling, this would be it. And that's what continues to excite me about poker, that it affords me the freedom to live life on my own terms. The game has changed a lot since I first began playing nearly 20 years ago, but one of my goals is to save you time by sharing some strategies that are working in the streets today. Much of what I'm about to share comes from my recent experience in playing online, as well as the countless hands I've reviewed from my clients and students alike. Just like flopping a set, I hope it brings value to you. Thanks for your attention, and good luck. All right, I know you're eager, so let's dive right in. Uh, three of these moves are going to be tactical, and two are gonna be practical, so gonna be a mix of content here today. But before we dive in, uh, if you're new here, welcome to the Conscious Poker YouTube. I put out another one of these videos that was really popular, top five moves to win at poker in 2019. Uh, a lot of the content is evergreen in there, a lot of bet sizing strategy and tactics, three betting and stuff like that, things that still apply to poker today. Uh, but for the moves to win at poker in uh, 2021, number five is the check. And it was just kind of weird to say because a lot of poker is about being aggressive. But because so many people in poker today are being really aggressive, uh, my experience recently in playing uh, online and coaching a lot of people that are sending me their hands, I'm seeing a lot of situations where it's just raise preflop, see bet, raise preflop, see bet. And then what's happening is people are aware that people are raising and betting. So what do they do? They start calling otherwise known as floating, meaning they call the flop or they call the turn with weaker holdings or sometimes stronger holdings for balance, planning on taking the pot away later. So this renders the uh, continuation bet as a less effective strategy because it's being countered by people that are calling very often. So this, the one and done strategy of raising preflop and sea betting, like we learned you know, back in the day with Doyle Brunson's super system, uh, was effective, but because people have adjusted, it's no longer effective. So a good strategy to counter that, right, to, to, to do the opposite of what your opponents expect is to check and do so especially with some stronger holdings so they never know what you have. Now a great situation to do this is when you're going for a either a check raise with a strong hand or you're going for a check call and making your hand look a lot weaker. So typically when, when you're the preflop raiser and you check call post flop, boom, they put you on ace high. They just assume you have nothing because they think if you had something, you would have bet. So you checked and you called. It's a sign of weakness. You probably have an under pair or a middle pair or ace high. So they immediately profile you and your entire range and they put you on these weak middle strength hands. And the reason is that most people play weak hands this way and they play their strong hands with a bet. So every time they check, they have nothing. Whenever they bet, they have something. And so every time they check, their opponent knows, boom, it's time to fire. It's time to take uh, action and be aggressive and to bet with a lot of hands. So a good strategy to mix in is check with some stronger holdings and then don't you know, uh, blow things right away and check raise. Sometimes check call and do this with hands like top pair or maybe even sets or maybe even over pairs on drier textured boards and allow your opponents to bluff you, call them down and you could win a lot of chips. Poker tip number four to win at poker in 2021 is a, it's a little bit of a uh, one-two punch here. So it involves betting small on the flop when you're the preflop raiser and then making a big bet on the turn. So it's a down bet followed by a big bet or a down bet followed by an over bet. So as the preflop raiser, you bet small on the flop. Then when your opponent calls, especially if a favorable turn comes for your hand, meaning it's more likely to help you than it is to help your opponent, you make a big bet on the turn. So an example and is, let's say you raise preflop, your opponent calls, the flop comes uh, jack 6-4. They check, you bet a third of the pot, and they now call. Now the turn comes a king. They check again, and this is a great turn for you to make a very big bet. Regardless of whether you have a strong hand or a weak hand, this turn card favors the raiser's range. It's more likely that the preflop raiser and see the continuation better has a king than it is than the caller has a king because there's not many hands that the caller can check call with that contain a king. There's a lot of hands that the bluffer or the raiser can bet with that contain a king. So this card is better for the raiser's hand and therefore he should be applying a lot of pressure and it's especially good to 
back up that small bet on the flop with a large bet on the turn. So this is a great example of when to implement this play, put a lot of pressure on your opponents and force them to fold. All right, third tip to win at poker in 2021 is a play you wanna make very occasionally, very rarely, but it is the cold four bet bluff, okay? So let me explain. Let's say, and the reason this play works is that a lot of times people are being more aggressive in poker nowadays, especially when I'm playing online, I see a lot of times in the small blind, uh, people, they only re-raise. So they never call, they either fold or they re-raise. And they do that with a mixture of strong and weak hands. But a lot of times their range is weaker because they have hands that are bluffs, they don't wanna call a raise, so they re-raise in the small blind. So an, a situation that happens often is late position opens, the small blind re-raises, and now you're in the big blind. And this is a great opportunity, very rarely, especially if you have an ace in your hand because it is what's called a blocker, meaning it prevents your opponent from having a hand that's likely to be strong because you have an ace, making it less likely they have ace, king, and aces. You can make a, then a fourth, a third raise, which is called a four bet. And so it goes raise, re-raise, and you come in with an additional raise. And so you have you know, your big blind in the pot, you make an additional raise on top. It looks very, very strong. And this forces both players to fold unless they have super premium hands like queens, kings, or aces, which most of the time they don't, and you can pick up a nice pot. All right, number two, a strategy to win at poker in 2021. We're gonna move on to the practical side of poker now, and that is to game select. The fact is true that you can be the 10th best player in the world, but lose money if you're playing against the nine best, or the 10th worst, play, 10th, 10th worst player in the world and win money if you're playing against the nine worst. And in a COVID world where um, a lot of poker is being moved online, people are being more cautious with their money, and a lot of local games in casinos, like in Vegas and LA, for example, don't have the tourism. Games are getting tougher, people are being more cautious, people are game selecting more, and they're only choosing games that are more favorable. So the way to do that is to find games that you can win at and only play in games when there are inferior players to your level of skill. That guarantees that you have an edge. So it doesn't really matter how good you are, what matters is how good you are relative to your opponents, minus the rake, of course, that is gonna be your win rate. So if you find games where there's worse players and you only play in those games and you have the humility and the discipline to quit games when they're not good and to hunt for games that are good, you're gonna put yourself in a profitable position to win more money long-term in poker. And the number one strategy I have for you to win at poker in 2021 is to manage your money correctly. So bankroll management is probably the most important skill in poker. It's not what everyone wants to hear. It's not necessarily the most sexy, but just like it's true that you can be an average player and win a lot of money if you play with worse players, you can be a worse poker player overall with worse skill, but if you game select well and manage your money very effectively, you will be a long-term winner. So the strategy is you wanna have enough buy-ins that can allow you to play profitably and reach the long term in the games that you're playing. So a good rule of thumb is if you're playing online and you're playing tournaments, you wanna have something like at least 100 buy-ins for the tournaments you're playing. If you're playing cash games, you wanna have 50 or maybe even 100 buy-ins as well. If you're playing live, you can get by with a little less because there's less uh, variance because the win rates are bigger. So there's less variance in live poker. Uh, but still, if tournament poker, live poker, you wanna have at least 50 buy-ins, probably 100 and in cash games, you wanna have like 30 to 50 as a minimum. Now you could afford to take shots in bigger games uh, if you want with a small percentage of your bankroll. And in fact, we encourage people to do that if they're taking small amounts of their bankroll and they're taking shots either in tournaments or in bigger stakes games, that's fine. Be sure to move down and take time off if you lose and only play in games that you can afford to play in. There's a great, uh, video that we put out called uh, how to manage your money like a pro. There's a link in the description below and as well as how to deal with the variance in poker. This walks you through our blueprint for figuring out which games and stakes are right for you. And is part of our premier content at, uh, at Conscious Poker of our Alex Academy program. Our next cohort, help you turn poker into a profitable business, starts in January. So if this is something you want help with, uh, the, the practical side of poker with game selecting, the mindset, the routine, the bankroll management. This is all stuff we help you implement and build from the ground up. So I encourage you to check that out at the description below. Otherwise, thanks for your attention. Uh, let me know which poker tip was your favorite. Leave a comment below. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for everything. Uh, you guys are awesome. And I'd love to bring you more content in 2021. I'm really excited for shooting more stuff here with you, uh, for you guys. So thanks for everything. Uh, cheers, everybody. And uh, see you guys next time.